What's up everybody, I'm Private Hudson and this is the Stanley Parable. Stanley Parable is part of the genre of games derogatorily called walking simulators. A lot of people don't even want to call them games as the majority of them are pretty pretentious and lack any form of gameplay. I like to think of them as interactive experiences and some of these are really well done, including this one. Stanley Parable to me is a critique of one of the biggest issues of game design. Games don't progress without mandatory player input. This has been shown in many hilarious videos on YouTube. When the first person remake of Syndicate came out, someone posted a video of a scene where two guys are holding down another guy and are, are telling you, the player character, to grab a syringe and inject him with something. The video is around four minutes long and whoever was trolling the player character just stands and doesn't do anything. And it shows you that the game literally pauses, it, time freezes, nothing progresses unless you do a silly arbitrary action. Critico posted a video of Alien Isolation, and in one of the game's earliest moments, you meet up with a bald male character, who gets into a scuffle with another human. Unless you aid him, the animation between the bald guy and the guy he's fighting just loops indefinitely. Hell, we have the whole hilarious press F to pay respects meme thanks to Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, where the developers thought it'd be a good idea to introduce mandatory player input into a cutscene in order to progress the game forward. These are all cases of bad game design, and they're usually done in such a cheesy, poor manner that they are immersion-breaking and unintentionally hilarious. This is what I believe the developers of Stanley Parable were trying to show. You play as Stanley, an office worker whose job is nothing more than receiving orders to press specific buttons on his keyboard. One day, he stops getting those orders, and then he quickly realizes that all of his co-workers have disappeared as well. Throughout the game, you come across areas where you have one of two choices to make. By following the story as the narrator presents it, you go through about a 20-minute, completely linear story where you're supposed to take down a mind control device to get your freedom. This is obviously ironic, on purpose, as the game is extremely self-aware, and it mimics the bad game design examples I mentioned previously. Only by doing what the game tells you to do, will progress it forward. By not following the game's instructions, you acquire the narrator's wrath, who then is constantly insulting you for hating his game, ruining his story, and even tries to coax you into restarting it, and tells you the story is so cool, it's got a mind control device and everything, it's, it's really hysterical, and it's so fourth wall breaking. There are around 18 endings in Stanley's Parable, so the majority of the gameplay is going out of your way disobeying the narrator by either ignoring his commands or, or going to the wrong locations. You'll end up in hilarious situations and unexpected locations. Stanley Parable is truly bizarre and unpredictable. It's a wonderful experience with phenomenal writing and voice acting. Unfortunately, that experience is far too short. I put three hours into the game and have experienced just about everything it has to offer, including almost all of its endings. A good portion of these endings take mere seconds to get. One of them is closing the door to your office as soon as it starts. Another is jumping off a ledge and killing yourself, which takes about 10 seconds to get to. The rest of them take around 20 minutes to do, but the game starts getting old and tedious at that point, as you are constantly replaying the same sections of it over and over and over again. Every time you get an ending, you respawn back to your office in the beginning of the game and start anew. The joke of going to the right door instead of the left gets old when you've done that action about 50 times at that point. As I previously mentioned, one of the endings is doing everything the narrator tells you to do. Well, there's another ending of doing everything he says except for his last command. Basically, you're replaying the same 20 minutes of content just to experience a different ending that is only three minutes long. Is that trouble really worth it when you can just go on YouTube and watch the last three minutes of someone's video? There is a little bit of variety in the game. There are a couple of rooms where the narrator has several lines of dialogue and a different one is played each time you enter it. The break room, for example, has a huge number of lines, and they're all hilarious. As the narrator sarcastically insulting the break room, and you for not following his instructions and going to the break room instead. There's another one of you hiding in the broom closet, and if you hide enough times, the next time you play the game, the narrator makes sure it's boarded up so you can't enter it. But these rooms are few and far between, so each time you replay the game to get a different ending, you're going to be hearing mostly the same exact dialogue in many of the locations. Steam Spy reports that the average playtime has been four hours all time, and two hours in the past two weeks, so 
My experience with it, time-wise, has been the experience of most people. Like I said, I put three hours into the game. Personally, I can't recommend spending $15 for only three hours worth of content. I purchased it in a humble bundle a few months ago, and that was a fantastic deal. It's currently on sale for $3 on Steam. The sale ends on December 1st, and that is more than a fair price for this experience. There's a demo available on Steam as well, so you can check that out. Or, shit, if you feel like it, you can just buy it for 3 bucks. Spend less than two hours playing it and then file for a Steam refund if you're that fucking cheap. Alternatively, you can just watch a few Let's Plays on YouTube if you don't feel like spending a dime. I genuinely like the Stanley Parable. It's a hilarious critique of game design and gave me a couple of hours of joy. So definitely check it out if you like what you've seen and heard.